today we're going to be going over 17 different mistakes that players are making in kingdom versus kingdom aka kvk in rise of kingdoms and then at the very end of the video i'm going to give you guys an extra little bonus tip slash tool that you can use to calculate your crystal tech progression so make sure you guys stay tuned for that but first what's going on guys cheers now as you guys know from my previous video king's land recently ended our kvk is pretty much over and a lot of you guys commented on that video saying that my video got you excited or nervous nervous for kvk because you were either coming up on your very first kvk ever or you were coming up on your first season of conquest and that made me realize that i haven't made a video going over mistakes that i'm seeing players make in kvk since june of 2021 that means it's been over two years since i've given you guys some tips for your kingdom versus kingdom so hopefully this video is going to be useful for a lot of you guys that are new players but there's also going to be some tips that are sprinkled in that maybe you don't even know as a more advanced player and just to be clear these tips are in no particular order some of them are going to be more valuable than others so hopefully there's at least one thing you guys learn from this video and if not then i owe you a cookie i'll give you guys a cookie is that fair okay the first mistake that I want to go over here is something that I know the leaders in my alliance find super annoying when players do this and that is teleporting in a particular battle zone without asking permission first now I know that that sounds a little bit it sounds a little bit annoying right because you want to be active for war you want to participate in kingdom versus kingdom events okay so let's say that you know on so and so day let's say two days from now we know that the level eight passes are going to open and because you know this you teleport your city as close as possible to this level eight pass because you want to be in position at the exact moment that that pass is opening that way you could be there for the rally you could be there for the opening fights assuming that you're going to be fighting somebody on the other side of that pass so you might be thinking that you know teleporting there early is a good idea because then you secure your spots but keep in mind that a lot of times for these big events especially big pass openings or going into king's land for example especially uh these these spots that are as close as possible to the pass should be reserved for some of the most powerful players in your alliance or your coalition okay there have to be players nearby the pass to rally the pass to reinforce the pass and also to launch any rallies on the other side of that pass and you also want your strongest players to be able to refresh their marches as fast as possible as you enter into that battle zone okay so if you have you know 48 million power and you teleport right next to that pass two days in advance well yes you're securing your spots but you're basically taking away a spot from somebody who might be a rally leader garrison leader or something like that and then people have to ask you to move and you waste to teleport and it's just a, it's crazy so before you teleport onto territory in a war zone or what will soon to become a war zone just make sure you ask permission first and this also applies for flags that you are building during an active war zone okay so let's say we push through pass eight and then we build a flag right here okay this is like the first flag that we build into this zone uh as soon as this flag is done don't just teleport on top of it okay ask hey can i teleport on the flag is anybody else teleporting there because again the front lines okay should be reserved first for rallying garrison leaders second open field fighting machines okay the giga chad whales that are running seven armies deep okay you also want to reserve spots for leadership okay and also flag builders and then at the very bottom of that totem pole okay once everybody else has a spot then you can fill in with other players that are online and that might be you and it's not to say that your you know enthusiasm and help is not appreciated it's just that it, it you know there's an opportunity cost there's limited space so hopefully this uh tip makes sense and you can avoid making that mistake so you don't get yelled at by your leadership okay mistake number two is that i see players using epic commanders after kvk2 okay uh epic commanders i think pretty much everybody is going to use epic commanders in kvk1 unless you're some like giga chad and mega whale okay uh and there may be some cases where you would consider using uh like sun tzu or joan of arc in kvk2 if you really have nothing else and you have to put something on the field 
maybe okay and even then like you really should reevaluate if you should even be fighting in the open field at that point you probably shouldn't you should probably be focusing on getting better commanders getting tier five units etc so even kvk2 is a really questionable choice to be using epic commanders uh but especially anything beyond that kvk3 season of conquest you should never be using epic commanders in the open field guys uh i know sun tzu is great okay i love soon sun tzu as much as the next guy joan of arc incredibly good for buffing nearby armies but if you're using epic commanders in kvk3 or season of conquest you are just asking to have your hospital filled okay do not do it i know that you maybe want to help you want to fight this is all that you have it's the best you can do uh my recommendation is you know if you only have you know uh, two legendary commanders and you can only build one march then that's it only fight with that one march you're done that's that's fine you're good you're not ready to fight with multiple armies if you're trying to fill in the gaps with epics that's just my opinion just don't do it you'll save yourself a big hospital bill mistake number three do not forget to use your kahar bone whistles okay of course you're going to get some of these from bastion quests and typically i like to save two or three of them just in case they show up in my bastion quest later down the line sometimes there will be a quest here that says you know like this one right here defeat kahar the hidden one time okay so I like to have at least two or three in case they, they pop up in the Bastion quest every single day. So I like to stockpile them a little bit. But if you are about to go into war, it's a big war. It's a pass war. Uh, it's King's Land, for example, right? Uh, you don't want to be holding on to extra Kahar bone whistles because these will give you, when you defeat it, a nice chunk of uh, crystals and there's a good chance that you're going to need those crystals to just push one more level in your kvk tech just like one extra thing maybe it's just a little bit more march speed it's one percent march speed maybe it's one percent attack two percent attack whatever it is if you have five bone whistles or whatever that's uh, you know that's that's six figures of crystals right there okay so don't forget about your bone whistles uh don't use all them right away but if you're about to go into a fight definitely use these like a couple an hour or two before just so that we can get as many crystals as possible and push your tech as far as you can mistake number four is starting a rally on a flag fort or pass without getting permission first okay now I know that a lot of you and again this all comes from good intentions which is why these are mistakes that players make often because they don't realize that they could be making a mistake okay uh but let's say you're a, a good player or at least in your kingdom you're considered a strong player uh you see an opportunity to rally a flag and you go ahead and you rally it okay and you don't realize that there are other players in your alliance or in your coalition that are online and are better suited to lead that rally maybe they have better commanders they have better equipment they have better armaments whatever the case might be there might be somebody else that is better equipped to lead that rally and if you lead the rally and you're not paying attention to alliance chat or here's a bonus tip voice chat okay uh, this is a little bonus tip for you guys but you should be in a discord you should be in a voice call if there is some big war happening okay that's what all the best alliances are doing so yes definitely recommend that and if your alliance doesn't do it i suggest finding a kingdom or an alliance that does but if you launch a rally without asking permission or not paying attention to chat what happens is somebody else in your alliance or coalition cannot start a rally on that flag okay uh because you can't double rally something unless you have multiple alliances or multiple coalitions touching that specific flag so if you're only touching at one point okay and you're the one that starts the rally well now your better players can't launch that rally until yours goes and fails or until you pay attention and cancel it okay so don't just go starting rallies willy-nilly make sure you're paying attention read chat join voice chat whatever that way you don't get yelled at by leadership mistake number five is not chaining barbarians in the lost kingdom okay now what I mean by this obviously if you've been watching this channel for a long time or you're familiar with rising kingdoms you know what chaining is okay I shouldn't have to explain it but one thing to keep in mind here is that if you are attacking a barbarian in the lost kingdom you're going to be paying a much higher action point cost 
for those barbarians right it's 80 action points for my Richard to attack this level 54 barbarian because he's a much higher level than your standard level barbs because the action point cost is so high you really want to get the most value out of that action point spend as possible okay so there's even more of a reason to be chaining barbarians in the lost kingdom because it is more expensive do not be chaining barbarians in the lost kingdom hopefully that makes sense okay now for those of you that don't know what chaining is i will explain it really quickly but essentially what you do is you will attack a barbarian with a primary commander that's extremely tanky typically richard but i've seen players do it with like martel and things like that and then the secondary commander has a massive circular aoe or half circle if you have no other choice but typically players will use either ysg or Druga leung or Heraclius, Heraclius, however you say it. Or again, if you have none of those options available, you can use a commander like Ethelflaed, okay? And essentially what happens is when you attack one of these barbarians, the AOE on the secondary, let's just say it's YSG, if it's close enough to another barbarian, it will cause that barbarian to attack your army for free at no additional cost. The reason that you have Richard primary is because he's very tanky. He heals a lot. He takes less damage. Okay. There's a lot to love about Richard uh, for this reason. And essentially what happens is as you're fighting them, you're going to move around and you're going to inch closer and closer to another barbarian. And then your YSG AOE shot will cause that barbarian to start attacking you. And you kind of go through and for only spending AP for one attack, you're able to, to you're able to get rewards for like one two maybe three if you get lucky uh and you really have to make sure that like they're really close by like you it's really hard to to do this if they're far away it's basically impossible if they're too if they're too far away like it's, you can't chain at an infinite distance because you can only drag a barbarian so far but that's you know i'm sure you guys get the point make sure that you're chaining in the lost kingdom if you can another massive mistake that i see players make is teleporting onto territory of your coalition but not necessarily your alliance when you are at risk of being rallied okay the only place that you are safe in the lost kingdom is your alliance territory okay if you teleport onto coalition territory that's fine you can do that but you could be rallied okay uh and there's a good chance that if you're in an active war zone somebody might take that opportunity just to rally you for the heck of it just for fun just to farm kills just to make you anxious for whatever reason if you're not on alliance territory there's a good chance you could be rallied okay so just because you can teleport onto coalition territory doesn't mean it's safe don't think that oh well the enemy's distracted they're not going to notice that i'm on coalition territory trust me okay that is just blood in the water the whales the sharks the dolphins they know when you're not on territory someone's gonna notice and next thing you know here comes the Attila Takeda here comes the Attila Nevsky and you're gonna be taking massive rallies okay uh, if you guys missed my previous video we showed two rallies uh in Kingsland or adjacent to Kingsland and they were kind of crazy so go ahead and check that out if you missed it but you don't want to end up like that and this should go without saying but if you're gonna log off for the day okay uh I don't care if you're on Alliance territory now anything could happen so if you want to play it super safe you can teleport back to your starting zone okay uh that would be the actual like corner or section of the map that you started um kvk in or you can use a 24 hour peace shield okay and hopefully you wake up in time or you log back in in time to where you know it hasn't gone away uh because definitely players will think that they're safe and they're not and this especially goes for the eight hour peace shields this is the most deceiving item in the game because you use it and you think that you have eight hours of safety but you're gonna go to sleep for eight hours okay and you're gonna wake up and realize that your pace shield ended 34 minutes ago uh and you're dead already okay so it only takes a few minutes to get zeroed so just keep that in mind if you're going to be going offline for any amount of time uh and in sketchy territory definitely use a 24-hour peace shield or teleport back to your uh, safe zone mistake number seven that i see some players making is using a random teleport once you take a brand new pass okay uh, and i can see why players do this and some players if they know what they're doing and they're super super pay to win whales okay they might be able to do this effectively and it and it's good but i would say for the most part and like 95 percent of the time this is a mistake even if it 
feels like it's not and let me explain okay so essentially what happens is let's say a new pass becomes available you guys rally it and you take it what some whales will do or dolphins or whatever is they will start to use random teleports and hope that they randomly teleport into that new zone that just opened up and ideally they would teleport somewhere along the midline or closer to where the enemies are coming from that way they are able to uh you know catch them off guard right because again this is a brand new zone the enemies may not have seen you random teleport so they don't expect there to be any enemies in the middle of a freshly opened zone right uh and then if you randomly teleport and you get lucky then boom there you are and you're Gucci and you might think that this is a good thing because now you're in an advantageous position to attack the players coming through uh their pass okay and again it's it sounds good and you have good intentions but there are problems with this first of all because you random teleported you can be rallied okay so as soon as they realize what you're doing you can be rallied and don't forget you can still imprison in this game okay uh and if you start fighting and you run back to your city you could have war frenzy so you can't use a bubble so a lot of players will do this thinking that they're gonna get a lot of kills a lot of free kills a lot of easy kills and then they end up getting zeroed because they they weren't paying attention or they, they don't know what they're doing okay uh the other thing and the other problem and this is something that maybe a lot of players don't think about when they're doing this but if your city is in the middle of a zone and you're trying to pick off stragglers or you're trying to catch a random group off guard that means that your armies aren't where they need to be during that time okay you're off doing your own thing which might be good for you but it might not be best for the alliance it might not be what is most beneficial for your coalition or for for the outcome of that kvk right if we take a pass and we're all pushing together in the zone at the same time and we have a massive you know ball of fighters at a certain location uh and then you're just off in the corner doing whatever you're doing you're not helping the major war you're not helping the main point of contention in that in that zone and if you're not going to help then like what, what are you doing right you're just farming kills for your own account which again is fine but your talent could be used somewhere else with much more effect so don't make the mistake of going off on your own and doing your own thing uh unless you really know what you're doing unless your alliance leadership asks you to do it or something like that save that strategy for like the giga the giga whales okay i know it's fun i know it's it's cool all right uh and you can get lucky but most of the time it's it's a net negative just just don't do it okay mistake number eight and and this is going to be exclusive to rally leaders and also those of you who are watching that are you know leaders of your alliance or r4 or whatever uh this is good information to have okay the mistake that I see players make that our rally leads is that they launch a rally without anchoring that rally when it really makes the difference okay and what do I mean by this some players might not know what I mean by anchoring the rally so if I were a rally leader and let's just say that our flags were touching here and I wanted to rally this okay what I could do is I could start the rally and it would be a five the fastest I could launch the rally would be five minutes right that's the fastest you can choose here you have to wait at least five minutes but what if the enemy has a ton of presence around that flag what if you don't have control of the open field by the time your rally launches right well first of all you want to move as fast as possible in kvk when a new pass opens you want to build as fast as possible you want to burn the enemy as fast as possible okay uh because the, the game rewards speed okay the faster you can defeat the enemy the better you're going to be so you want to launch the rally as fast as you can you also want to have field control when you launch that rally okay and if you launch the rally without an anchor then it's going to launch in five minutes all right so you basically have five minutes to clear the open field and you might not be able to do it in five minutes it might take seven minutes it might take 11 minutes right you don't know because the enemy is showing up in numbers so what you can do is instead of just launching the rally blind and hoping for the best you can add a single tier one unit it doesn't have to be tier one it could be really whatever but it would be ideally a single tier one unit from somewhere far off in the corner of the map okay and I'm just I don't mean to pick on this player I just picked somebody randomly far away okay but you can put a farm account all the way over here or have somebody else in your alliance or your kingdom that's not doing anything they can teleport back to your starting zone go all the way off in the corner okay go all the way as, as far away as they can get basically and they can join your rally from like 40 minutes away with a single tier one unit okay and there's this does a couple things first of all it anchors the rally so essentially that rally if the five minute timer is up 
that rally is not going to launch until everybody is there and because that tier one unit is walking from 40 minutes away of course it's not going to be there but because it's only a single unit you can still basically fill out that rally okay you'll still have a 3 million troop capacity or it would be 2,999,999 so you can still basically fill it with tier five and then the benefit of this is that once you gain field presence once you gain control of the area around that flag that's when you would go ahead and kick out the player with the tier one unit or that player is ideally paying attention and they see okay now is the time to launch the rally and they remove their single troop and once they do that the rally launches right away okay so that's how you can sort of control or time the exact time that you launch a rally and also if you're trying to like double rally something or double rally a pass or whatever and you want to make sure that let's say the infantry rally hits first that way it can tank uh this is how you would do it you would anchor both rallies you would launch the infantry rally and once it gets close enough then you launch the second rally so that way the correct rally hits first and that's kind of how players do it so if you guys never knew how people coordinated that now you know but a mistake I see a lot of players doing is they just launch rallies and they don't have control over the field and they just hope for the best uh and that's definitely not a good strategy and this is how you can control it if you know what you're doing also another thing that you can do if you burn a flag and it's still burning right uh you can launch a rally again uh and then just kind of anchor that rally right and then as soon as the enemy repairs the flag you launch it that way you don't have to wait five minutes right because usually what happens is enemies will repair the flag and then you launch a rally and then you have to wait the five minutes and the flag is repairing in those five minutes the best thing to do is once it starts burning then you start uh, another rally you anchor it uh and then your enemy might not even repair that flag because they know that as soon as they repair it you're going to launch the rally again uh and this kind of is a very aggressive offensive strategy that you can use uh to your advantage and not doing it is probably a mistake mistake number nine is not using dot mode when you're fighting in massive open field fights okay this helps out a ton on pc and it's honestly a game changer okay now the downside of this is that uh fighting in dot mode is boring uh and if you guys don't know what dot mode is this is dot mode okay yes you can control your armies in dot mode I can move them around uh and you know they're doing their thing they're moving around on the map if I zoom in you can see they're walking okay uh the game is much uglier in dot mode and it is way less visually appealing also the little name plaques of the armies block a lot of action however dot mode helps you a ton with visibility in massive open field fights okay a lot of times uh look you can't even see how many of my armies are here it looks like there's two but there's actually three okay there's one there's two and there's three uh and that's because you know even with simplified graphics you know if you're fighting with hundreds and hundreds of players all in one area with different alliances different coalitions there's different alliance markers and flags and all this stuff is going on right uh even with simplified graphics you might not have a good idea of exactly where your armies are but in dot mode you do the dot the this is exactly where your army is okay and you'll be able to see the enemy dots as well you'll be able to see the gray dots of enemies walking around the red dots of enemies that are actively fighting and engaging with you with your alliance right and this will give you a really good idea of not only your location but also who is actively fighting and who is running away and you'll get to see if you're being dragged too far into enemy territory or not uh and it lets you react much much faster instead of trying to you know see like oh like am i am i overextending like am i hitting the guan or am i hitting the william like well, i don't know what to, just just zoom out and you'll have a perfect idea of what you're doing where you are what you're hitting and if you're overextended or not i promise this makes a really really big difference at least for me i know that some players hate dot mode it's ugly you know it, it doesn't look cool it's not fun it makes for bad content of course i get that okay i understand that and some players want to know who they're hitting they want to know what player they're hitting they want to know what primary they're hitting right they want to be hitting the Guan Yu they don't want to be hitting the Tarek right I, I get that uh, there are some disadvantages of this and also it may be harder for you to know if you are being hit so you want to keep screen flicker on which a lot of players hate okay so uh, that's all personal preference you don't have to do that if you don't want to but I personally think that if you're playing on PC dot mode is infinitely better because it gives you way a clearer picture of where you are 
and way better control over your armies mistake number 10 has to do with swarming flags okay now first of all if you are a free to play player or a low spender or you're running low on troops you probably just should not be swarming flags don't swarm the fortresses don't swarm the player cities okay this is all well behavior this is all giga chad behavior okay you probably don't want to ever do that but if you find yourself in the scenario where you are going to swarm a you're going to help swarm a flag or whatever the case might be uh if you start the swarm run away when your armies get to yellow okay just i'm telling you that is the best strategy for a few reasons first of all a majority of the deads and damage that you're gonna take come from when you are under that 50 percent mark and especially under the 20 or 25 percent mark like once you hit red you're basically gonna get most deads okay that's where most of your deads come from if you guys didn't know so essentially what happens here is two things first of all by running away when you hit yellow you've maximized the amount of damage that you can do with taking the least amount of damage back okay the second thing is that when you're swarming a flag or a fort or another player city for that matter there's a maximum number of players that can be swarming a particular structure okay uh, I don't off the top of my head I don't know the exact number you guys can let me know in the comment section below if it's 20 armies 10 armies 30 armies I don't know I really don't know but you'll probably have noticed if you've ever tried to swarm something before is you click and drag to to swarm something and instead of actually hitting it your armies just walk in a circle around it okay uh, and what that means is that the maximum number of players are already hitting that uh, that structure and so you can't hit it because it's reached that cap uh, so essentially if you have your armies that are hitting it and they're at yellow health or below well first of all you're going to be taking a bad trade anyway and second of all there's probably other healthy players that are trying to hit that flag or fortress that can't do it because your yellow or red armies are hitting that flag so run away let somebody else deal the damage because it's going to be way better for you and your allies and way worse for your enemy also another little bonus here is that if you are going to swarm a flag or fortress or a player city uh do it after you've gotten the health low of the flag okay uh, and by that i mean of course you know if there's less troops in the flag like they're not keeping it full that's when you want to swarm it but also if you scout the flag and you see that the garrison captain only has a couple thousand troops left if you start to swarm it that garrison captain is going to take so much damage in a short amount of time you can actually kill off the garrison captain and the game will automatically pick another player in the flag to be the garrison captain and if there is no other garrison captain or there is no actual garrison commanders in there that's when you end up with those brief moments of a guan Yu as a as a as a the garrison captain right and, and all of a sudden you see players they switch it back to the zenobia or they flip it back to whatever because the the leaders realize oh my god the, the actual garrison captain died right uh that's how that happens in case you guys were, were wondering but the only the only exception to this is some zenobia combos um with zenobia's healing and the amount of health that she has some zenobia combos can just heal themselves continuously and they just stay alive basically for hours and hours and hours like it's actually insane i made a whole video about this a, a long time ago uh but there's some zenobia combos that will never die but uh for the most part you know if you see like a yadviga or a Bianziska or whatever the case might be um there's a good chance that you can kill the garrison captain if you swarm it while it's low at the right timing uh so you know don't start off with a swarm and give it a little bit like kill off some of the the big uh the big troops okay then go in for the kill after mistake number 11 comes in the form of not using army expansions okay now there's a little bit of nuance here so let me explain but for the most part if you're going into a big fight you always want to have either a 50 percent ideally if it's a fight that matters a lot or at least a 25 percent army expansion on okay why is this well it is typically better to have let's say three really high capacity really powerful and well equipped and well managed armies than it is to have no expansion and sort of five armies where your troops are sort of spread out more thin okay now there's some exceptions to this right because a lot of times you probably do want to get like that William on the field and you do want that Joan on the field right so there are some like supportive commanders that you would want out there uh that are exceptions to this rule but in general 
it's better to have more troops in fewer armies than it is to have fewer troops in more armies because if you guys didn't know uh, the amount of damage that you deal your normal attack counter attack and skill damage all scale with the number of troops in your army let that sink in the amount of troops in your army is directly proportional to how much damage you are doing okay and this is why vip 18 having a 15 percent troop capacity is so so strong for canyon okay because bringing more troops obviously you, you just have more troops right uh so you could take uh, you know uh, worse trades and still win but you also are just dealing more damage like it's literally in the battle formula the amount of troops remaining is part of the amount of damage you're dealing so it's just better and you're just going to get better trades in general with a higher troop capacity and also other players are going to be using this okay so if you run in there with your 200,000 troops and you get hit by a 300,000 troop army like you are done you are melted right away okay so you really want to use these uh if it's a serious serious fight you basically have to use the the 50 percents here uh but if you're free to play or you don't have these or you don't have enough troops to use this effectively at least go for the 25 this matters a lot so of course if you're only going to be reinforcing flags reinforcing rallies stuff like that uh, you don't need the expansions right because it's easier to reinforce something with 200,000 troops than it is 250 300,000 okay so keep that in mind but for open field fighting it's a huge mistake to not use these if you can mistake number 12 is not removing your armies from a flag fortress or pass when their remaining troops get too low okay now what do i mean by this because this might be confusing to some players why would i take my troops out of a out of a flag if we're being rallied okay it's a it's a really big deal so please pay attention a flag or fortress or, or really anything only can take 100 players okay uh so if you have a hundred players with a single troop that means you only have 100 troops in a flag and that will be capacity okay even though you'll have a hundred out of two million nobody else will be able to get into that flag all right even though there's room in the flag players will not be able to join because there is a 100 player cap so the rule that i have found most effective is if your army drops below one one hundredth of the capacity you should remove your army okay so in this case a flag can hold two million units okay so that means you would need a hundred players with 20,000 troops that would be the fewest amount of troops each player could bring to max this out okay so obviously nobody's running around with 20k armies all right obviously but you know if you have 200,000 troops you drop them in the flag and you look at the flag and you see that number of troops is going down right because you're getting rallied you're getting stormed whatever it goes from 200,000 to 185 to you know 76 or whatever as it goes down once it drops below 20,000 that's when I would pull it out okay now there's different rules for for different uh, alliances some alliances say you know if you go under 30,000 or if you go under 50,000 whatever um whatever percentage they want to use or whatever uh ask your alliance leader if they care about this or if they know about this or whatever but um the, typically I would say it's a decent rule of thumb to go by the one percent rule okay also for passes passes can hold three million troops so in this case when you drop below like 30,000 troops that's when I would pull it out okay because you could still only put 100 players in the in the pass even though the capacity is higher okay so by taking out your weak army somebody else can now get in if you're bumping up against that cap but if you see that the capacity of a flag or fortress or of a pass is not full but players can't join you got to start kicking out the weak marches get rid of the players that have 2k troops left 4k troops left they're not contributing at all they're just bloating that pass uh, and that's why you'll see that you know a pass will fall to like 2.6 mil out of 3 million and nobody else can join it that's what's happening okay so keep an eye on that especially if you're a leader uh that's going to be really important to know and also pay attention to your own armies don't be that guy i've been that guy everyone's been that guy but when you drop below a certain amount take out your armies okay just do it and this goes the same for rallies by the way rallies will have the same capacity as whatever they're rallying so if you're rallying a flag the rally will have two million capacity if you're rallying a pass it'll have three million capacity so keep that in mind and you know you can only add one army to a particular rally at a time uh but in general like just keep an eye on your troops okay mistake number 13 is such a basic thing that it's gonna sound ridiculous that I'm even talking about this in the video especially if you've been playing for a while 
uh but it is still so common that it blows my mind okay do not reinforce a flag from far away okay don't do it because look at this okay uh, my army is a minute and 30 seconds away but that capacity is reserved for my army for when it gets there but they're not active in the fight they're not doing anything they're walking they're not part of the battle so if we are getting rallied on this flag that means that 218 troops worth can't get into that flag because i'm walking from a minute and a half away but we're still getting hit you're basically clogging up the capacity to where now the real capacity until i get there the real capacity uh is 1.8 million right uh, a little bit less than that because this is 18 but you you get my point never do this okay never reinforce from this far away what you want to do ideally is walk as close as possible to the flag as you can and then once you get there then you want to drop your troops in then you want to go in okay i would say only a couple seconds you don't want to be more than like 10 seconds away uh if you're actively getting rallied like you want to get in there boys you want to you want to jump in and you don't want to be walking from too far away because there could be somebody closer trying to get in and they can't and you're just taking all this damage for no reason while your army is just walking around doing oh i'll be there soon also if you're rallying a target like let's say you're rallying a flag somebody in your alliance launches that rally uh you can you know join the rally obviously but if you're more than like three and a half minutes away just don't join it okay just don't join it because you're gonna you're gonna delay the launch of that rally because there's a little bit of march time and it's really typically it's a five minute rally most people people won't do anything more than that if they're seriously fighting so really what i'm trying to say is no matter what be close to whatever you're reinforcing okay it's just the best way to do it okay mistake number 14 is uh a little bit of i don't want to say it's a cheat it's not a cheat uh is it an exploit uh, I don't know is it how the developers intended probably not okay so this one's a little bit it's a little bit annoying it's a little bit sketchy but mistake number four what are we on 14 here I actually think this is 15. I meant to say that you shouldn't reinforce rallies from too far away that was a separate actual tip on my list here I don't know why I separated that with the reinforcing the garrison one this is uh technically 15 who cares who cares what it is but you don't want to let your enemies reinforce things easily okay and the way that you can prevent them from reinforcing things easily is by just putting your armies on top of whatever it is that they're trying to reinforce okay now you can see here that my armies are in my city but they're not like in my city but they're in my city okay uh, I can just stop them right here a and that looks weird and it's funny okay uh, but the thing is you can do this with any structure now you're not supposed to do that right like here we I'm walking I'm supposed to walk around the city like the game is is coded in a way where you're like it's supposed to have your troops automatically route around structures sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't here we're just gonna walk right into Kel City okay uh and like that boom here we are we are just we're just chilling in a city all right now how does this help you in war okay well here's what you can do uh, you can put your armies right on top of a flag that you are rallying if you are in the coalition okay so what what I mean by this uh there's a couple of things that you have to be be very sure of okay first of all if there's AoE in the flag like let's say the garrison has a Heraclius or whatever if your alliance is rallying that flag and there's AoE don't do this okay because you're gonna get hit by the AoE and it's gonna be a bad time but if your coalition members or your allies are rallying it you know and you're safe from AoE then what you can do as allies is just put your troops on top of the flag and what's going to happen here is uh, the enemy nearby is going to be trying to click and drag to reinforce that flag uh and a lot of times they're going to accidentally attack your army okay uh, and this is super annoying for the for the defenders and and I might get some hate for this in the comment section below uh but let's be real okay defense is stronger than offense right now in my opinion because you can build 90 forts in front of a pass bro and it takes forever to burn them and everybody hates fort meta but that is the meta right now okay uh just defend a pass with nine forts uh and you basically have a, a week to chill okay I don't feel that bad about giving the offensive players an annoying little trick to to fight back a little bit okay so basically you put your armies on top of the flag players that are clicking to drag to reinforce that flag will most likely accidentally attack one of your armies and look I'm doing this with three and you could barely even see the flag okay imagine if you have you know 15 20 players doing this 
all on top of that flag it's gonna be really hard to click and drag to reinforce it okay the other thing that you can do is that a lot of times what's happening in, in war is there will be a very strong player a garrison leader or a rally leader or whatever typically they'll teleport right next to that flag so that way they can easily put in a garrison captain or whatever um you can do this to their city okay because a lot of times what happens is uh and look here's that auto right it's supposed to do that every time but it doesn't what happens here is that a lot of players will also typically use that player's city as a sort of way to hop in and out of the flag okay so here we're gonna again i hope kel isn't online and i'm ignore I'm, I'm annoying them okay but a lot of times players will use an ally city to hop into a flag okay because they're not they can basically just teleport to the other side of it and there's uh, the minimum amount of time that they could be hit by aoe a minimum amount of time that they could be swarmed and attacked by uh by you by the by the enemy right um so typically that's how people can quickly uh jump in and out of a flag so if you just dump all your armies on top of their city well it's the same effect players are going to try to jump in and out of that city uh only to find that they've accidentally attacked the enemy troops standing in the middle of the city okay so again this I know this is a little bit annoying it's probably not what the devs intended but it's been in the game for a very long time I'm sure you've seen it I'm sure you know about it and again I don't feel that bad about this because fort walls are a thing fort walls are annoying so here's a little tip for you guys on offense and yes it is it is quite annoying but um, if you guys are wondering how to counter this you have to literally reinforce from the war tab okay by clicking join uh and if you can't join you come back and you click join like that's that's really like the best way to to counteract this if you guys are wondering it's really annoying but it's a mistake in my book to let your enemies just reinforce for free don't let them do it for free don't let them get away with it make it hard for them make it a pain give them a headache that's that's war baby mistake number 16 I'm gonna say is uh you know this is not for everybody okay uh but I think it's a mistake if you have the means to do so it is a mistake to not play on PC okay if you're fighting in war and it's a massive open open field battle okay you'd probably should be on PC being on PC is OP okay your PC is stronger than your phone unless you have a really old PC and the other massive advantage of PC is hotkeys okay uh you can customize the controls of your keyboard which is actually crazy okay now I haven't done anything I've I literally used the default I know that players do customize this to make things a lot faster and perhaps I should do that at some point but what I love here on PC is I can send out you know I can have multiple armies out in the field okay and earlier we talked about dot mode and how dot mode is is basically OP for PC and that that is true but what I can do here is I can zoom out control a will select all your armies in the field on the screen control shift a will select all your armies in the field even if they're off screen okay so here you can see my Boudicca is not on the screen here um if I do control a I only select these two if I do control shift a I select everything in the open field even the Boudicca over here okay uh so basically I can be in dot mode control shift a and I'm I'm instantly selecting everything okay or in this case I can even do control a because they're all on the screen and then I can right click for where I want them to go so I can right click here and boom the three dots are going to go exactly where I want them to go and this is also useful because I can right click you see that you see the little the little attack marker that shows up there I can control a at start attacking this barb and then control I start attacking this barb and then I can start attacking this one and boom imagine these are enemies you can just jump back and forth between enemies okay now when there's a lot of chaos out in the field you're not going to really know if you're actually hitting something or not so one thing that you can um try to, to pay attention to is the outcome of your click so by this I mean I I right click you'll see that little green arrow that means that you're moving to that location if you're attacking something you'll see the red arrows come into that exact location okay that means there's an attack on that target okay um, so if you are targeting an enemy in the field and you don't see that little the three red arrows that means you're probably moving that means you're probably you're probably walking okay so if you're in the middle of a battle and you see this this little green arrow that means you're just walking around the battlefield okay so make sure you pay attention to the red arrows that's the attack icon that's how you know that your right click 
initiated an attack on the target okay so keep that in mind but again i think it's a mistake to not play on pc if you can because this is hotkeys and right clicking to attack is op it's so good it's so fast there's so much precision so much control and that it means everything in big open field fights mistake number 17 is reinforcing flags with your most powerful commanders let's say an enemy was attacking this flag and i wanted to put infantry inside that flag well i can put my guan sargon in there and i will be helping out for sure but it doesn't matter what commanders i put into that flag it only matters that that my troops are in that flag okay so assuming that i'm not the captain of that garrison which obviously my guan Yu would not be the captain of that garrison i could put 200,000 troops behind a city keeper and it would do the exact same thing as 200,000 troops behind my meta army okay so why is it bad to put your good commanders in there well it, you can have one army in the flag and you can still have three armies on the field fighting okay so if one of your best pairs is tied up in a flag defense where you're not even the captain you're not even doing anything it's just a waste of those commanders you might as well have put a, a tau tau in there uh with whatever who cares fill it up and you're good okay you're still helping and then you have your good commanders to fight in the open field now the exception here is if you are joining a rally that's like deep into enemy territory and it's a cav rally whatever um then you probably want to pick an army that has good commanders okay because if you put in like yes you could put in your tau tau and just hope that you can outrun the enemies but typically what happens is you'll rally a target and then you either burn it or you cancel the rally or you all die if you all die then it doesn't matter but if you cancel the rally or if you burn the target then the the rally breaks and the all the little armies the 21,000 the 43,000 those little armies they all instantly route back to your city okay so they're going to be running through enemy territory uh and if you have like your lohar boudica running through enemy territory you're gonna have a bad time okay someone's gonna catch you and they will swarm you and they'll put you in the they'll put you in the hospital okay so in those scenarios you can either pick a really fast march like tao tao and hope that you can just outrun everything or you could send your you know your uh nevsky with joan or whatever uh and just understand that like yeah you're still probably gonna die it, it is what it is but at least you had good commanders to kind of negate a little bit of that damage that's the best that you can do but don't waste your good commanders in a flag it's just commanders that can't be on the field fighting and finally number 18 the bonus tip the other little mistake that i see players doing uh is not necessarily upgrading their tech in the right order or upgrading their tech and not realizing that they can't even unlock something else that they're working towards right so for example if you want to unlock quenched blades 2 uh, you probably want to do the minimum amount to get there and that's not to say that like things leading up to it are bad uh, but you should at least kind of know what it's going to cost you to get there to see if you can even afford it okay so what i have in front of me and what you're looking at is the season of conquest kvk tech simulator now this simulator was built by our good friend speco who is also the individual who built the battle simulator so essentially what this does is you can simulate how many crystals it will take you to get exactly uh what you're looking to get here okay so if you see here this is the amount of crystals that it costs to get crystal tech uh center level one here or whatever this is the cost to level it up again and again and again and boom okay so here you could see the the difference and and the amount that we're actually spending okay now as i'm doing this you could see that the cost of other things goes down why is that because that is the bonus that you get from having a higher level crystal tech research center okay so this simulator takes that into account and it does all the math for you to say to see okay is it worth getting that uh, extra skillful operation or not okay perhaps the the amount that you're spending on it um is more than you would save by leveling it up now of course you know sometimes you have to do it but you might not want to do it right away okay using the simulator it will basically tell you how many crystals you're going to need to get a a particular uh path right so here a level 20 research center and a level three quench blades cost 2.4 mil that's a lot that's kind of crazy but here you could see that if i have all these at at least level one it unlocks swift marching now i can't do treaties one because these are still locked uh but i can upgrade this and boom it un un it unlocks all them okay so this simulator is just a really really good uh, tool to have in your arsenal if you don't have it all memorized like do i do i how many do i need do i have exactly what i need 
uh this and it also again it fills in all the prerequisites that you need okay so you don't need treaties one uh, and cultural exchange one to unlock these okay so it basically simulates the entire thing for you without actually needing to spend money so that way you can see exactly how many crystals you're going to need to get the exact amount of crystal tech that you want and the exact minimums to do that now of course to get access to this and the rock battle simulator you do have to be a member of the uh, patreon i am not associated with speco's patreon by the way all the money that he gets from that goes to him uh i am not sponsored by him this is all I, this is just me promoting his products because it's so good and it's so helpful for so many people that like you need to know about this okay it's, it's very helpful there's some players that would rather use like a spreadsheet or something that's fine if your brain works like that some players like to see it mapped out for them okay so this is yeah this is everything it tells you everything everything you need to know it's a great resource um i don't i think it's a dollar to join his patreon i don't know exactly i picked whatever the highest tier is i think it's like three dollars or something like that i'll have a link to his discord down below uh that'll get you access to all the information that you need and also he has links over there that will bring you to the patreon and things like that if i can remember i'll put his patreon down there as well but you should probably try out this tool if you can if you feel like spending a dollar i know i know some players don't but it is what it is i recommend it i think you should uh, check it out and it will help you with calculating your next upcoming season of conquest progression all right guys that is going to do it for the video if you made it all the way to the end of this video i would really appreciate dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it let me know in the comment section below if you learned anything from this video if there's any mistakes that you're doing or things that you didn't know about let me know down there and if you knew everything here then you're probably a professional at rise of kingdoms okay and i definitely owe you a cookie while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace